Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. This video is for my physical science one lab students. It's all about speed and velocity measuring. Now we're going to be using a couple of toy cars, measuring their speed as they go across the tabletop. But a few things here just on the board behind me. One, if you're measuring an object speed, then that's something you're familiar with. You're driving in your car, it has a speedometer. What you're doing is taking the distance an object travels divided by the time it takes that object to travel that distance. And we're gonna be calculating the average speed during the course of this experiment. That's a little different from talking about velocity. Velocity is taking an object's displacement, dividing it by time. One other difference is velocity has a direction, whether that's north, south, east, west, northeast, away from the building, toward the house, whatever it is to point someone in the right direction. Um, but just drawn out here for you. So when you're talking about distance, you're talking about the total pathway an object travels. If you start one place and you go three meters and you turn 90 degrees and you go north for four meters, well, you travel a distance right here of seven meters, but your displacement means you draw a straight line from where you started to where you ended up. So your displacement, if you draw a line from beginning to end or start to finish, you end up five meters from where you started. So that's just the difference in distance, the pathway you travel, and displacement, how far you are from where you began. But that ties into the definition of velocity and speed. All right, so here are the materials we're gonna use in during this lab. Of course, lab handout that you would find for my students on Canvas, data tables. We're gonna be collecting all this data in just a few minutes. But two main cars we're gonna be using. One, this little fan car that when you turn it on, it's gonna push air here toward one direction away from the fan. This little piece of plastic that's going to connect to this fan car later to act kind of like a sail. This constant speed car right here that's just battery power and it'll operate in forward or reverse. With that, we're going to be putting 500 grams on top of it at one point. We're also going to be using it to kind of tow these 500 grams. This little index card is just going to connect onto it just like this so we can pull it behind right there. Um, during one of the questions at the very end of the video, there's a couple of extra things using this sail, using this car near the end to help you answer some of the questions. So we'll use this car for one of the questions. Got my tape measure to do my measuring with, as well as a meter stick. Got some tape to lay down start and stop line, and then a stopwatch so that we can time everything. So I'm gonna get this all set up and we'll get started. So I got our two cars sitting here on the table with my data sheet and I laid out a start line here with a piece of tape. I've got my first line at 75 centimeters and then we're going to need our second line over here at 125 centimeters. But first thing we're doing is we're taking this fan car, we're measuring three separate tests for it to drive to 75 centimeters over here. Um, its wheels kind of fall right here on the piece of tape so that's what I'm watching for over here is when its wheels touch this piece of tape on the other side. And I got my stopwatch and I will show this time to you, call this time out um, for each time that we do this. Alright, so getting my cart ready and go. Alright, that very first trial right here took 1.59 seconds. 1.59 seconds. That was the fan car right here. Fan car trial one at 75 centimeters. Alright, so then I'm going to call out here in just a second trial two or time two, time three. You'll take the average of those uh, three times so you can calculate the average speed over here using a distance of 75 centimeters. We'll do the same thing with the battery power car. And then I'll be calling out the times for 125 centimeters. All right, so let me clear this and we'll get the car ready to test two. Go. All right, that time, 1.50 seconds on number two. 
one more time with this car. All right, that third trial on the fan car, 1.55 seconds. All right, now we're gonna switch over to battery-powered car. Get it turned around here. All right, and for it, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line up its wheels right here with this line. That's easier for me to see than trying to line up the tops. Easy for me to see when the wheels cross the other line over here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, and I'm gonna start my stopwatch when I set it down. All right, ready, go. All right, so that first time, 1.63 seconds on the battery car, 1.63 seconds. And there we go. That second time, 1.74 seconds, 1.74. One more here. 1.70, 0. 1.70 seconds. All right, we'll do the same thing, but now we're gonna let it go all the way down to 125 centimeters. All right, so I'm going back to the fan car, and ready, go. Sorry, I kicked my camera there as I walked to the line over there but 2.07 seconds, 2.07. All right, so next test on the fan car, go. One point eight seven, one point eight seven seconds. And third and final try on the car, Fan cart 125, 2.00 seconds. All right, now we're gonna switch back to battery powered car again. Go on 125 centimeters. All right, I got 2.78 seconds, 2.78. That time we got 2.80, 2.80. I didn't hit the stopwatch in time. I didn't start it right. All right do that one again. Third try on the battery car, 2.89 seconds, 2.89. All right, so now we're down here on this next part. We're still using this battery powered car, but we're gonna use it with 500 grams. And we're gonna do it three times with the 500 grams on top of the car. And then three times, like I showed you earlier with the materials, towing the 500 grams behind the car. All right, so first one, 500 grams on top. Ready, and go. Throw it all down. 3.00 seconds, 125 centimeters with 500 grams on top. All right, let's try one. So we're gonna do this. Again, ready, and go. That time, 2.80 seconds, 2.80. All right, one more trial on that. It only counts if I start the stopwatch. All right, so one last test there, 2.86 seconds. And let me set up this last part. For this last part, because I'm trying to pull these 500 grams behind the car, I reverse my direction. So I'm actually going from my finish line 
to my start line, but it's still 125 centimeters. All right, so first trial here, get this car turned on, ready, go. Four point one zero. Four point one zero seconds. Get back to the beginning here. Back to the end, actually. Ready, go. Right, that time. Four point one two seconds. Four point one two seconds. And then one last test, totaling the 500 grams. Ready, go. Stop. All right, third, final trial there, 4.04 .04 seconds, 4.04. .04. Now, a few pointers as you get into answering your questions. One is if you take the speeds distance over time and you rearrange that, then what you're going to see is when you're trying to find the time it's going to take something to happen, that it's the distance that object has to travel divided by its speed. Now, one of the other questions is going to ask you about converting your speed that's now been calculated in centimeters per second, converting that over to miles per hour. So just for example, if an object were traveling at 50 centimeters per second, the conversion factor is that 2.24 miles per hour is equivalent to 100 meter or sorry, 100 centimeters per second here. So you're taking your speed, multiplying it by 2.24 miles per hour, divide it by 100 centimeters per second. What that does then is your centimeters per second all cancel out, you're left with miles per hour. In this case, 1.12 miles per hour. Now, there's still some more experiment to go with a couple of the other questions, question number six, question number seven, so keep watching the video for those two parts. You'll need that data to answer those, but hopefully this video has been helpful. As always, if you need more help, then feel free to reach out to me. Now we're looking at question five. So I've set up my meter stick, this time a meter from my wall, marked my start, and this is actually gonna be my start line and my finish line this time. And we want this car to go down to the wall. It's actually gonna hit the wall, flip itself over, and come back. And we're gonna measure how much time. So we're going one meter to the wall and one meter back, or 100 centimeters to the wall and 100 centimeters back. So we get this car going. So it actually climbs up the wall, puts itself over, and we've got a time, bring it into focus, 5.87 seconds. And one of the key parts of this question is dealing with the difference in speed and velocity. One of the key things for velocity is that you ended up right back where you started with, or sorry, where you started at. Ended up right back where you started at. Question number six on your handout. So um, I took you know, a fan car and what we saw earlier is we turn this on, it's gonna to wanna to begin to accelerate because the air is being pushed to the right. So as the fan pushes the air to the right, Newton's third law tells us in turn that the air is gonna apply equal but opposite force to this fan, cause it to accelerate to the left. Now, hard to see because it's clear plastic, but I've mounted this plastic piece onto this fan car. And so now when we turn on the fan car, the wind, the air is gonna blow against this sail. So pause here, make a prediction. What's gonna happen when we turn on the fan? So hopefully you made your prediction. We're gonna turn it on and let's see what happens.
Well, what happens is this fan car doesn't go anywhere. The difference now is same as before. The air is applying a force to this fan, and if this sail isn't here, that's gonna cause the entire car to go to my left. You would think that the air blowing on this sail would cause everything to go to the right. But now what we've created are two forces that are balancing each other out. That while the air is pushing back to my left on the fan, the air is also pushing to the right on this sail. And everything here is balanced. Those two forces are balancing each other out. And so the net force on this fan car becomes zero and it's unable to accelerate in either direction.